Hello, this is Michael with Field Tech Academy. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Work Market. This video is going to be an overview of the platform. If you're new to the platform, this will be a great place to get you started to kind of understand how to navigate the website. In my subsequent videos, I'm going to be going into more detail about how to request jobs, how to make counter offers for pricing, and how to optimize your profile. Let's get into the introduction. You're going to go to the website at workmarket.com and you're going to select login. Now, if you're not signed up yet, watch my previous video on how to sign up for Work Market. Once you've entered your credentials, you're going to log in. It's going to take you to this home page. The main navigation points are here in the middle. You've got your profile where you can make changes. Work Market has a thing called Labor Clouds. The assignments section is where you're going to go to find assignments that are assigned to you or assignments that are available for you to do. And of course your payment center is where you're going to see all of the payment information for jobs that you've been paid for and pending deposits, things like that. I also use some of the navigation over here on the left side. The more you fill out here, the stronger your profile is going to look to buyers. There is a tests section. In this tests section, you can take any tests that you think relate to you. By taking these tests, you let these buyers know that you have the basic skill sets that they're looking for. This may allow you to become one of their preferred techs. So this is something good to explore. In the labor clouds section, this is where you can become a part of one of the buyer's labor clouds. A buyer can organize and pre-screen a bunch of technicians. So this is something you might explore a little deeper. Under the work section, you've got my work. Under the my work section, you'll have a lot of filters available. This is going to show you available work, assigned work, work that is waiting to be approved, work that is already invoiced. You can manually select find work or when you're in the my work section, you can go down and look at available. This will show you all the jobs that are available right now. The work market interface to me is a little clunky. The way they sort tickets is very odd to me. You'll see that you've got July 17th, 7th, 12th, and then it jumps down into June and then back to July. What I would care about when I'm requesting a job is when is it scheduled? Because that's how I want to look for jobs. Right now it seems to be sorting okay. I'm seeing jobs ahead in the future, July, but I've got three pages of tickets. One thing I've noticed with Work Market is a lot of older tickets hang around for a long period of time. So it's showing you right now that 23 tickets are available. But the majority of these were scheduled in May and June and even further back. I'm just on page two of three. If you want to bid on any of these jobs, you'll just click on them. You'll notice when you hover over the rectangle that it highlights, but it's not clickable. You actually have to click on the header title to go into the ticket. And at the bottom will be your option to apply. Today is July 8th when I'm recording this. So right now, July 12th, 14th, and 17th are tickets that are out in the future and available. If I go to find work, now it's going to show me two tickets. Even expanding my mileage range out, I'm seeing three tickets, but they're not the same three tickets. Just be aware that when you're looking for available jobs, you probably want to look in both places. Work Market has filters over on the side, so you can kind of narrow things down by a date range. And then you've got all of these other statuses. So right now, available is in orange, which means it's only showing me available tickets. I can select in progress to see any tickets that I have started to work on. If I go to invoice, this will show any tickets that I have completed and I'm waiting for the buyer to do final approval on. Anything that's in the paid status will show me the jobs that have been paid they have a calendar feature, but I don't use this because again, I'm working with 20 other clients. I'm not gonna maintain a calendar on this website. I use Google Calendar. Obviously you can see your ratings here. This is very important. You wanna make sure you're getting ratings from buyers and you're giving ratings to buyers. You're being reciprocal. You know, your ratings are gonna help you build your profile. And then of course you've got your payments section. Overview is just gonna show payments that are pending to you. The payments area is gonna show anything that's past due, anything that's currently due, the total earnings for this period, year to date, and then anything that's available to withdraw. You will have your accounts section here. You can set up multiple accounts so that you can manually withdraw to a different account if you needed to. And you have one account that you can set up as an automatic withdrawal account. So as soon as a buyer releases payment, one time a day, Work Market will automatically sweep deposits into your bank. 
one word of caution, work market payments are not guaranteed. And what that means is you have risk. For example, I have $500 worth of receivables that I will never see. This is so old, but of course it's a daily reminder when I look here that that money never got paid to me. And there's also another little dirty secret about work market. You can complete a job and the client can simply never approve it for payment and you'll never get paid for it. Just keep that in mind when you're dealing with work market buyers from 2019 to 2022, I did over $100,000 worth of business. I had no buyer during that period stiff me for payment. The jobs that I got hurt on were a few years ago and represent a total of about $2,500. So when you talk about percentage versus what I've made over the lifetime of work market, it's a very small percentage. I have experienced this, so I wanted to make sure that you are aware that it's possible. To avoid that, you want to look at your buyer's ratings before you're requesting a ticket if you've never heard of that buyer. Alternatively, you can limit the amount of work you do for a buyer until you have completed one job for them and seen their process. You know, were they a buyer that never responded to messages and inquiries? Were they a buyer that took three weeks to approve a ticket? Were they a buyer that never actually released the money? I wouldn't do $2,000 worth of work for one buyer that you've never heard of until you've vetted them and proven that they will pay you for the work. I don't want to scare you away from using work market, but I feel like you should know that there is a possibility of that risk on this platform. You can do searches on work market by selecting here, and this will allow you to actually search by ticket numbers that you already have, that you're aware of. You can get support by going here. You'll get notifications here. If you select on your avatar, you'll have some more options. You'll be able to go to settings, which will allow you to change your profile and other things like your tax information, your insurance information. If you're a company profile, you'll be able to manage your employees here and set roles and permissions. That covers the basics of work market. In my next video, I'm going to be showing you how to actually request tickets and how to make counter offers and go into a little bit more detail on that process. My goal with Field Tech Academy is to help aspiring technicians see what they can do and to help experienced technicians have higher performance. If you got value today from what I shared, please like the video and subscribe to the channel so that you can learn more about how to be an independent field tech. Don't forget to check out our website at fieldtechacademy.com. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as some other products that can accelerate your quest to become self-employed as a technician. As always, let's get you out in the field making money. I'll see you in the next video.